Well, my name is Susan Morgan Cooper, and uh, I'm here at Glasgow for the film festival to uh, show my film, An Unlikely Weapon. Eddie Adams photographed 13 wars, six American presidents, and every major film star over the last 50 years. History would be changed through his lens. And his most famous shot was one that he took in Vietnam. It's of this um, Viet Vietnamese man shooting the Viet Cong point blank in the head. And um, it's, for me, the story is the story of a photographer who, no matter how good he is, like all artists, no matter how good they are, they are always frustrated. They never think they're quite good enough. We all want to be the best. I don't know why. <laughs> You know, I mean, what's the difference? And then we often wonder, we wonder why we do the things that we do. Um, nobody really gives a shit. Um, so actually, Kiefer like, Sutherland narrates the movie. So I called him up and he said absolutely he would do it, no question. And I think it was the very next day that he got arrested for the DUI. And I thought, oh, damn, there goes my narrator, you know, because it was, it was really a bad time for him and bad timing. And I had to have the narration done in a few days. And bless him, right in the middle of that whole kerfuffle, he called me up and said, don't worry, I'll get it done for you by Saturday. You know, that's just the kind of man he is. History would be changed through his lens. But the person that he found hardest to impress was himself. There were only two people, actually, that I ever contemplated um, narrating it. And one was Clint Eastwood, because he'd had a history with Eddie. And the other was Kiefer. And to be very honest, for two reasons, I preferred Kiefer. Because number one, I'd asked Clint's son whose music I really loved, um, who'd done letters from Iwo Jima, I'd asked Kyle Eastwood and Michael Stevens to do the music, and they'd said yes. And then I thought, that's going to look really yucky if I say, um, Clint, can you narrate it? Then it would look, it would be sort of a compromising thing for his son, and he wouldn't stand alone as the composer. I flew to New York to meet Eddie Adams and I, I spent three amazing hours with him over a couple of beers and um, I said to him, so, so do you like me? And he said, yep. I said, well, you want me to do the documentary? And he said, yep. And I said, well, why do you like me? And he said, I don't know, I just do. And it was just like that. And I got news that he'd contacted uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And he got very sick very fast. And within the three months that I was in Italy, when I came back, he was gravely ill and died shortly thereafter. <laughs>